It's my favorite mug. Types of motivation. We're going to talk about a couple different ones today. Hunger, sexual achievement, social motivation. We'll wrap up with a couple review questions. But first, if you are interested, I've made some free Cornell style film the blank notes for you to follow along with the lecture. If you don't want to kill your hand trying to take all the notes at once, jump down below. There's a link. Let's go for it biological basis of behavior. So we got some hormonal on and off switches that tell us when we're hungry, when we're full. So the first hormone we're talking about is grilling. I like to think about I'm grilling me some burgers because I'm hungry. I just like grilling. Grilling is the hormone released when we need food. It carries the hunger signals. This is very important to the lateral hypothalamus. You got to know that the LH. The way I like to remember this is the little guy is hungry. Look at that little guy. He's hungry. Chomping down that bottle. You go get it, man. More and more of that grilling is produced when we're underweight. So if we're below our set point, we will talk about that in a second. It's going to produce more so that we get our weight back up to that set point. Anorexigenic, that signals satiety. And that is that feeling of fullness. So when we've had enough food, you know this after Thanksgiving, it's been 20 minutes and you're like, oh no, I ate way too much food. Anorexigenic, that is sending signals to your ventral medial hypothalamus, VH. The way I like to remember this is kind of gross. Vomiting hot dogs. You've eaten way too much, you're gonna throw up. Just think about our boy, Joey Chestnut, great American hero hot dog eating contest. They found that rats with lesions on their ventral medial hypothalamus tend to overeat all the way to obesity. So they don't get those signals of feeling full. The set point is our individual weight range that's optimal. Everybody has their own and our bodies are really efficient at keeping us at that set point. If we drop below it, pushes us back up. If we get above it, generally keeps us about the same spot. It's influenced by our basal metabolic rate. That's the energy that we burn without doing anything else. So if you're just laying in bed all day, the amount of calories that you burn right there, that is your basal metabolic rate. It changes depending on your body structure. So if you're a bodybuilder and you have tons of muscle mass, your basal metabolic rate is going to be a lot higher than some skinny guy. And of course, that's going to vary by individual. So let's keep going. Glucose, it's sugar broken down, provides energy. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Food is broken down into glucose and our, our body uses that. Then insulin is released by the pancreas to regulate that blood sugar. So we go through a cycle here, we get hungry, our blood sugar gets low. So we eat, that blood sugar shoots up, the pancreas releases the insulin to bring it back down. Eventually the blood sugar gets low again, we're hungry and that cycle repeats itself. If you're hypoglycemic, that means you have a low level of glucose. You kind of get that irritability. You may have experienced getting a little hangry. I know I do all the time. External hunger cues. All right, let's get away from the physiological side. We'll start talking about the psychological side and also the social side of hunger. So signals linked with food. Think about this. If you smell some delicious pizza, even if you're not hungry, you're going to want that. Sight, time, people, emotions. These are all psychological factors. Classical conditioning is a great one. If you have a set time, you eat the same time, uh, dinner every night at 6 p.m., 6 p.m. is going to roll around. You're going to be like, oh, I'm hungry. Maybe you sit down in front of the TV and you usually have a snack. So you go sit down in front of the TV. All of a sudden, you're classically conditioned to start feeling like you're hungry, even if you don't need that food. Stress, obviously, emotions can push people to eat. We know that when we eat high-fat, sugary foods, it makes us feel good. Dopamine is released. So that helps. Culture has huge implications on our preferences. We know that children who are exposed to a variety of foods are more adventurous eaters. Social coaction is being with other people motivates us to eat. So you know if you've already had lunch, but your friends are going to get some pizza, you go over just to hang out and sit with them. Oftentimes you'll find yourself ordering a piece of pizza also. Out of balance eating behaviors. Obesity is an interesting one to look at. I like this little graphic here. It shows the shift over time, I actually had an older one and an old set of notes from 1985 up to 2010, and the percentages were much lower. It was like zero to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20. Over time, we're obviously trending in the wrong direction as a society, but humans have a genetic predisposition towards high fat foods for survival. This makes sense with evolutionary psychology. We go out, we're striving for those high caloric foods, and we desire those. Well, up until 100 years ago, 
humans didn't have that many options to go get food easily. Today we do, and it's difficult to regulate those desires. Individual metabolism also plays a role, just like our set points. Sexual motivation, here's the definition. A desire to have erotic experiences that are pleasurable has roots both in mating and in passing along our genes. Sexual motivation is not always connected with romantic love, which has attachment in addition to that sexual desire. So there's two pieces right there. Each has distinct brain and hormonal mechanisms. Attachment is connected with high levels of oxytocin and vasopressin, whereas sexual desire is connected to estrogens and androgens. Those are both released from the gonads. All right, social motivation. The balance theory by Fritz Heider talks about how humans need to be in harmony in social situations. So let's give you an example here. The picture is my wife and I at our nephew's wedding a couple years ago. Let me break it apart for you. So down here, we have a balanced social interaction. So Jen, my wife, likes me. I like my wife. She likes kittens. You know what? I also like kittens because they're adorable. But in an unbalanced situation, I like Jen. Jen likes me. She likes country music. I wish I did. I'm trying, but I don't really love country music. So that is an unbalanced social situation right there. Finally, we have achievement motivation. This is gonna be connected to intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. We have high achievers driven to accomplish goals that they set themselves, motivated by failure. Now we all have these high and low achievement moments and situations in our own lives. When we are driven to accomplish goals that we ourselves desire, if that's school, if that's sports, Whatever it is, if you are the one being motivated, you are generally gonna be a higher achiever. Whereas low achievers are gonna be more performance oriented, right? Maybe other people's approval uh, is what they're going for. Maybe they're being pushed by their parents to stay in a sport they don't really care about. Externally driven, this can also lead to adopting learned helplessness over time. Awesome, let's get into some review. Repulsion, curiosity, and humility are all examples of needs, emotions, instincts, motivations, or incentives. Ooh, difficult. What is going on with that baby over there? B for baby? I don't know. The correct answer is C, instincts. Those are all instincts that is C for catch. It's trying to throw you off there, throwing up a baby. Next one. Which of the following factors signals hunger in our body? Can you remember? Can you think about it? High levels of glucose. Stimulation of the lateral hypothalamus, stimulation of the ventral medial hypothalamus, high levels of cholestistic chylin, or stomach contractions. What do you think? What's that picture looking like right there? Correct answer is B, lateral hypothalamus. That baklava looks delicious. Yes, please. Look at that guy. Which of the following is not a psychological factor of hunger? Psychological factor. Social, cultural learned associations, personality traits, peer pressure, or nutrition. All of those have to do with the brain, except for nutrition. E, look how excited he is. He looks very excited. Motivation starts with an individual's emotion, arousal, drive, need, or incentive. About it, take a final answer. Correct answer is D for detective. That is, it starts with a need. Awesome job. Hey, students, do me a favor. Give me a 20-word summary on the bottom. Really drive home that information. You can also do this like the day before your test is a good review. Go through, give 20-word summaries of each set of notes that you have. Teachers, if you're looking for any resources like these Google Slide notes, I got a bunch at my Teachers Pay Teacher Store in the link down there. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. You're the best.